So with that, we will hand it over to our first keynote, which is um, by Alexis Richardson, who is the person who coined the term GitOps. So he'll share a little bit of a welcome and um, a history on how we've been thinking about GitOps until today. So with that, I will hand it over to Alexis. Thank you so much, Tamo. I'll share my screen. Can I do that? Yes, we can. Great. So I don't know if you can hear me. I'm Alexis Richardson. I'm a co-founder of WeWorks and CEO. And um, it's true, as Tamo says, that I, I coined the word GitOps, although I think it may have been coined by someone else in the team by accident and then forgotten about, and then I might have revived it or something, but uh, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of that one day. So I'm welcome, welcome, welcome to GitOps Days. And as Damani was saying, thank you for all the amazing suggestions for Daniel's DJ name, which we will be certainly uh, voting on very shortly. Um, today, I wanna to talk to you about um, what's going on in GitOps right now. Why do we care about it? What is it? and what are the main things that you should be thinking about. And then Cornelia will do a next level down uh, technical detail in terms of how it works. And then we'll have a, a range of amazing speakers talking about what they actually do in the real world with GitOps. So first of all, what do we mean by GitOps? What is it? Is it like a technology? Is it like a community? Is it a, is it a practice? Is it like DevOps, which is a family of things? The answer is it's, it's kind of all of those things, but the main change is that we have some new technology in GitOps. So we are definitely building on uh, many, many years of best practice in DevOps. Uh, we're trying to make Kubernetes cloud native applications super easy for people who don't necessarily want to know about how Kubernetes works or look at YAML files necessarily. We also want enterprises, businesses, to feel they have some kind of operational model for this stuff. But fundamentally, for, for, for in terms of what's, what's pushing the envelope, it's about innovation around automation and making um, the existing uh, investment in, in CICD and DevOps work even better with, with Kubernetes and trying to create a family of technologies and a community around that because um, when we kicked off the GitOps concept, we did not want it to be tied to only WeaveWorks things. We thought it was really important that other companies, other teams, other communities would come up with their own implementations of GitOps. And together, we would make the um, user experience really fantastic. So today is all about inclusion. And if you've come to GitOps for the first time, you've come to the right place. And on that point, you might be asking, am I doing it already? And the answer is you may well be, because already there are so many things that we sit on top of that, that GitOps um, represents. Uh, Mark Burgess, uh, who's reasonably well known in the uh, tech industry and com computer science world, um, started writing down something called Promise Theory. And uh, that essentially says that there should be a split between the description of how, how you want to manage a system policy and how you actually run it in practice management. And he called that promise theory. And then shortly after that, there was this, this, this revolution in the industry of DevOps and continuous delivery, um, many, 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 many things in the industry around that. And then after that, we had tools, Terraform, Puppet Chef, um, infrastructure as code, and now Kubernetes has arrived to make it even more incredible in terms of making it democratic, easy to use and accessible. So why do we care about this? Ultimately, this is about people who are responsible for making changes to systems. That could be um, platform owners, it could be um, application developers, it could be ISVs, startups, large companies. There are even some cloud providers that have told us that they use GitOps to implement everything they do. So it's not, tied to any one particular size of use case, but it is tied to making changes. And the key questions you should be asking yourself are the ones shown here. You know, am I in the correct state? How do I know? If, I, if I'm not in the correct state, how do I get told? What about deployment? If I, if I make changes, if I want to deploy an application, or if I want to roll out a whole machine learning platform or something else, how do I do that? Can I make it a one-click experience? Because 
I have lots of end users who themselves want to write machine learning applications. What about the life cycle of this stuff? You know, people talked about Docker introducing the, you know, the idea of, um, well, actually it was even before Docker, VMs uh, were considered to be either cattle or pets, meaning, you know, do you care about your VM? Is it something that you can delete and reproduce cattle or is it something that you, um, you know, once it's gone, it'll never come back, your pet. And uh, with uh, clusters, we see the same thing again. You know, do we, want, do we want to be able to reproduce them easily? Or are they very precious pets or even snowflakes that we can never even touch? Upgrades, how do we do that? And then finally, how do we scale this across many, many, many teams, applications, and clusters? And so the technology of GitOps is all about how to do that. So I'm going to talk about that now and try and introduce what's going on. So first, we start with the assumption that production systems are basically a black box. They're somehow locked down. I mean, I know that everyone's different, and some of you look at them very closely, others don't. But let's, let's start from the assumption that production is essentially a black box. We don't know what's going on inside. We have to observe it, and uh, we may not be able to touch it. So to um, quote charity majors, we start with observability. Uh, we shine a light on the black box. And then we ask, how can we make changes to this? We can push changes. There are many ways of pushing changes in, including one, we might have a management GUI, or we might even use manual tools. Or more commonly, what we see a lot with our customers is people using CI tools, continuous integration. And there are some absolutely wonderful tools out there. GitHub Actions, GitLab. Jenkins, CloudBees, Travis CI, Circle CI, and so much more. All of these things are really good at creating a series of changes, managing them for you, and then rolling them out together. And so therefore, we can observe the results of changes. That's one way to manage the system. And that's what I call the traditional black box way of managing a system. So what is that good for? Well, it turns out that if, if you touch a system in a simple way and make a small atomic change that is easy to verify, then it's relatively easy to do that and then check that it's okay for a single system. Uh, what happens, what, what can go wrong is you do this a lot. So you might do it for multiple systems or you might have multiple changes or you might have complex transactional changes that you wanna to group together atomically or you might want to know how to verify the result of a, a complex workflow of changes. So here are some examples. You know, are my systems all in a correct state? Are the components in a correct state? Or maybe I'm running a fleet of clusters in across a whole continent, or maybe in a country, or maybe in a state. If you're in America, you might, let's say you're running all of Texas and you've got mobile phone masts and in each mobile phone mast you have five Kubernetes clusters. How do you upgrade just the ones that need upgrading? You don't necessarily want to do all of them. I've been on stage with Chick-fil-A talking about their restaurants. They have about 8,000 restaurants. Uh, each one has Kubernetes clusters in it. How do you patch the right ones that need to be patched? And then you've got things like um, people who want to have ready-made production uh, systems which include extra things not kubernetes so give me some machine learning clusters or i have an existing cluster how do i upgrade it while keeping things highly available there's so many things and we really 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 struggle to use the the sort of push change and observe it model to 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 check that things are okay there what we need instead is we need to be able to guarantee that changes are correct and secure, and we need to programmatically verify that, which means that we need to be able to say, I can do this automatically, systematically across hundreds or thousands of things. I know that many of you are running small scale systems, not everyone runs thousands of clusters, but wouldn't you rather that it just worked and you didn't have to do it manually? It's gotta be easier that way. So what's wrong with a traditional black box approach? Basically, it comes down to this. Updates and observations are decoupled. 
we're not able to correlate them clearly. We're doing them from the outside. Uh, we don't have atomicity. We don't know that if a group of things is initiated, that they'll happen or they'll all fail together. Um, we can't verify that things are in a correct state. So this means that if you do anything complicated, meaning, as I said, you know, multiple changes or maybe more than one cluster or something complex, then you need to rerun the whole thing. So we don't want to have our CI tool responsible for rerunning everything. What we need is a different chain, different, different way of managing change. We don't want to do it manually because that's insecure. We don't even want to have CI tools directly touching production because that's potentially insecure. So here's what we do instead. We run agents inside the cluster. It's that simple. That's all that we're doing with GitOps. We are, uh, Flux is an example, but there are others that you'll hear about today, like Argo CD, that are converging with Flux. If you run inside the cluster, you can observe the entire, the entire state from the inside securely, and then you can compare it with whatever is the desired state in, in Git or, or the image repos. And then if you can see both, when they are different, you can take action. You can trigger an update, maybe a, a push of a new piece of code or fixing an error. And that means these agents, when they want to do deployment, they pull the images in. They don't push them from outside. They pull them from the inside, which, of course, inherits all the security properties of Kubernetes itself, which is much better. And these changes, this, this divergence, can happen in many, many ways. On the left, you can see development. I can merge a PR and Git. I have a CVE patch, CV patch available. My uh, CI tool creates a new container. Or on the right, you can see drift, security events, rollouts, and much more. All of these things can trigger convergence. So it's a symmetrical model for managing change. You're winding down, Alexis. As a result, you can make changes without fear. Deploy apps, modernize CI CD, automate cluster operations, and experiment with progressive delivery anywhere. So here's a one sentence you can take away. What is GitOps conceptually? You compare the running state with the desired state all the time. And when they're out of sync, you converge them. That's it. And this gives you operational automation. Right now, we're able to do this for bare metal, VMs, clusters, and fleets. In the future, more things. So just to wrap up, a quick bit of advice for production users. Three things. GitOps is additive to your CI. It's not the same. CI is great for development, but it's not an op operational tool. If you add GitOps to CI, you're getting ops on top of CI. But don't use CI for ops or deployment. That's the takeaway. Scaling your repos securely is complicated. Short version, talk to us, but you should become familiar with Git security model. And finally, GUIs. Everybody loves GUIs, they're great. Don't throw out your GUI, but look for GUIs that work with GitOps. Here are some ways they might need to do that. And to finish up, optimism. We're seeing so many production use cases. This stuff is super real. You'll hear more about it today and tomorrow. There are so many tools, too many tools. We need to bring them together. And it's not just Kubernetes. So many other things are doing GitOps as well. Stay with us today to find out more. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.